Hey guys, I'm Laura Polko and I'm here today with Aquaj to show you how to get that red carpet wave. So this look actually can be a little harder than you would think. So I'm going to give you the quick tips and tricks of how to get there. What I did was I started on Ashley using the C Extend Silkening Shampoo and Conditioner. So you wash with that and then I use the uplifting foam here. So I do that on the roots and I like to use the zigzag pattern. So I start down at the bottom. If you want to turn your head a little bit, I'll start down here, blow dry in. I like to zigzag there and then I use on the ends the CBD leave-in. The great thing about this product is it also works as a heat protectant. So since we're going in with a blow dryer as well as a curling iron, it's really important that you have that. So I do that zigzag sectioning and then I'll go in, I blew it out and then, you know, the next section up, I went in, did the same thing until we got to the top. So I started here by already curling some of it just to get in. And what I do is I spray a little bit of Beyond Body. So what we do with Beyond Body, it's a sealing spray. I spray it on usually a really light mist. And what you want to make sure to do is you don't want to spray it too close. So you can see here when you spray it too close, you get this, it gets really wet. And then when it gets really wet, then you're going to have, you know, inconsistent product uh, usage. So what you want to do is you want to get a good spritz all over. So you just get it over the section, really helps seal it in, and then you can go on and curl. So I'm going to keep going up the head. What we did is I love this little side part. Obviously do whatever works for the face shape. Everybody has their side that they like more than the other. So from here, I'm going to stick with this parting. So on this side, we have this. Again, we're gonna spray a little bit there using that section. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush it through so you have really even distribution. Now, this part I find really important. So a lot of times people don't know where exactly to start as you're curling, but what I like to do is this side is gonna be directed away from the face. This side is also gonna be directed away from the face and the top we're gonna to set it. So that way you have that volume. Now, once we're working with the top, I like to just smooth it over. So that kind of seals down those little flyaways that everybody has, especially if you color your hair. So I just smooth it over. And then what I'm gonna do, again, away from the face, is I'm going to place the iron under. And what that does is we're getting this height here and we're just going to simply Work this in, but we're gonna do it vertically. So it's lined up with the section, whereas a lot of times I feel like people like to go horizontally with the section. And that does work, but that's not my preferred method to do it. So however you like to do it, this is showing you kind of this example. So you see, work it all the way in with the ends, and then I'll let it go. And here, how big are, oh yes, if anybody has questions, please ask, please, please, please. My sections, I actually like to line them up with about the size of the, of the curling iron barrel. So this one is a tiny bit bigger, so I like to go a little bit bigger, but I like to keep it around. This is, um, I believe, an inch and a quarter. So somewhere between an inch and, honestly, an inch would be too small, but I would do up to an inch and a half. But this part is also really important. So especially when you're working with volume, a lot of times people, once they curl the hair, they just let it drop. So when you let it drop, it's setting down here. Gravity is going to pull it down. You're going to lose all that volume you just created. So when it's cooling, I like to hold it in my hand. Obviously, it's hot. But I like to hold it in my hand up here so it sets in this curl pattern that you can see and you still get a little bit of that volume. So as you let it go, you can see you still have that without having to really set it. The top I like to set, but it's just a nice trick that I like to do around the head. So you have that volume that's working for you. Again, we're gonna move forward here. 
this section in the front, I do like to sort of direct it down to get that swoop so it's not too high up and above the face. I feel like that's really flattering on face shapes. So again, we're just gonna spray it, taking care of the ends. I, okay, so this goes, this has one through five. Um, I am on a four. So it depends on a lot of factors. Her hair is, she's bleached it. So with that, I like to take that into consideration. She has really long, you know, a lot of hair. So I can do a higher heat setting. But when you have color and bleach on the hair, you still want to be careful not to go all the way up. So some people... Like some people can do it. It depends on how healthy your hair is in the other factors. So you could go all the way up to a five if you really need it. But most people could do it around a three. And if you're doing a beach wave, I would suggest a three. I'll pin the top as I start uh, brushing out the bottom. But Instead of pinning, and that's only for volume really, but instead of pinning, I do like to do this, sort of holding it there, letting it cool down. You know, you can still see there's like a little steam from the product. So I let that cool. And then as you let it down, you get that nice placement. And then as I brush it out, because I do want this side to be sleeker and smoother. So that's why I'm going to set it here. Whereas the rest, it kind of just needs to be cohesive with the curl pattern and not separate. Okay, moving here. This is where we're definitely going to use a little bit of a setting technique. Because I think the crown is obviously, I think one of the most important parts, the crown of the head and the very front are the key, key parts to a style, any style. We're gonna brush it out. And this section at the crown is one of the only ones I would really recommend maybe switching from vertical to more of a horizontal sectioning. So we're gonna get it sealed in. So this one, I'm going to work it up because we want that volume. And here, I do like to use the iron this way to smooth it down. Waves have a very uniform shape to them. How yes. do you, when curling and turning your iron, what do you take into consideration so you don't end up with waves that are Totally. Yeah. I think it's really important to be consistent. So like I said, I do this side away from the face and this side, I also do away from the face on the opposite direction. But what I'm doing is you can see it's still horizontal, like I was saying, but it still has, if I was to drop it, it would still line up with the vertical sectioning, if that makes sense. So you're keeping that because you're using this section as more of a hot roller but you really, really, really wanna keep it consistent all the way around. And what that means is you're gonna to want to make sure you start at the same place. So if you're starting up here, you really always wanna start at the root, work your way down so you're really getting that because here's where you'll lose most of your volume. The ends you can you know, tweak and you can go back in at the ends, but that's really important and you wanna make sure you're using consistent heat all around. I think using the right products as well as the right tools are really, really important. So you want to make sure you're using tools that are always staying the same heat setting. Cause I think a lot of tools and a lot of people don't realize it, but you know, if you're using tools that are a bit older and not updated, it's gonna be really hot on this side if you start on this side. And then over time it's going to cool down and the iron's gonna cool down. And then you get a looser curl pattern here and a tighter one here. So you want to make sure you're using tools that are constantly staying at the heat setting that you set it to. So I think that's really, really important. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> okay. Here, this section is going to go up and back. We're going to stick with that. This one will be the last one that's going to be more vertically.
I also think when, with consistency, obviously using the right products is really key, but you really need to not, people like to overdo how much product they're using. So a lot of times you really don't need to do it. It's back to what I was saying kind of about like using a really tight mist or a tight shot instead of the mist because you want it all over. Same thing with hairspray, same thing with any products you're using, like it, like transforming paste. I like to work it in my hands first and mix in a little hairspray so you can really use it as opposed to, you know, getting it stuck and having spots where there's a lot of product and spots where there's none. Okay, here, what we're gonna do, is I'm going to kind of smooth that down, any flyaways. And here, what we're doing, we did it on the other side where you work it in from the back. So that's gonna kind of push this section forward and around. As you can see, that's gonna give you that kind of wave that goes away from the face and it'll get that nice kind of face framing. Opening right at the eye line, I think is really important as well. It's always flattering. I think any style, whether that's, you know, kind of how my hair is just naturally, and like it to open at the eyes. Especially if you're doing red carpet waves because you know you got an eye on, you know you wanna see all the makeup. It's not just about the hair. The hair is there to complement the outfit as well as the makeup. So then this one, I'm gonna let it cool. And also with any red carpet waves, any sort of really structured wave, be patient with yourself. If it's kind of like braiding where you have to talk to yourself through it, where you're like, okay, away from the face. Okay, away from the face. Okay, you know, and you have to pay attention. So don't be hard on yourself. It takes a second. It's not a big deal. Now the very top, I like to use more inch-like sections. And sometimes even depending on the hair and how long it is, how much hair there is, I actually will use an uh, inch barrel as opposed to an inch and a quarter or inch and a half just to make it tighter and you know a more put together wave there. Yeah fine hair is really tricky for this look I have to be honest so that's a great question. Um, I do think that using a heat setting that is way too hot is too jarring for the hair and actually will make it drop faster. And for curly hair, I or sorry, for fine hair, what I would recommend is really doing a proper blowout instead of with Ashley's hair, I can kind of rough dry it, get the product in and know it's gonna work with this hair type. However, with fine hair, you really need to go in, you need to blow it out. You might have to put the Velcro rollers in let it set, kind of get the hair used to what's about to happen, roughen it up a bit so it does hold it. And then when you go in, I would recommend actually pinning it each section, especially fine hair, it tends to not be as much. So you have less sections that you need to worry about. But yeah, fine hair is definitely can be tough. Come on, we're going to do this. And now we're on to the last section. I'm gonna use a fine tooth comb for this one. Okay, I'm gonna turn your head a little bit. And here we go, this is the most important piece. <laughs> the front is definitely hands down the most important. So what we're doing is by directing this, you're gonna get that swoop that's gonna go down. However, if you want volume and you want it up and off the face, the sectioning you would wanna create is going to be this, it's gonna be different. Oops, I tried to do it. It's going to go the opposite way as opposed to away from the face. And then you're gonna get that really nice volume if that's what you want. Daniela is asking if you could repeat the spray that you're using. Um, uh-huh. Sorry. 
No, <laughs> it's in my mouth, I know. Every hairstylist puts products in their mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this we're using Beyond Body to get everything kind of set. Um, and then I prepped with uplifting foam and the CBD leave-in. Again, the leave-in also works as a heat protectant. Super important, especially because we are using a lot of heat on the hair today. So, and then I, for the finishing, I like to use transforming paste, transforming paste and finishing spray. And I also like to mix them together, but I'll show you that technique. Um, okay, so now we've made it this far. Everything's kind of, I'm gonna let this finish cooling. And I like to hold the pieces where I want them to kind of sit. So as you're spraying, pinching the hair, kind of where you need it to hold. Yeah, but I don't think this chair really turns. Oh, here we go. It does. Okay. So you can see this. I did curl a little while ago, but this, you can see what's, what's going to happen. And then from here, these are the tools I, or the brushes I would use. I like a mason or something similar to it. The Bora nylon bristles are great. Um, and I also like to use the fine tooth comb to really, really smooth things out. So we're gonna start just by simply brushing it out, kind of getting it where you want it to go. And it's scary. The brushing it out part is actually very scary. You're like, is it all gonna go away? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Am I brushing it? Not enough, too much, but it really is important to get in there and actually brush it out. Because even if you do need to go back and curl more, the, if you brush it out all the way, you're gonna see where you might have spots that you missed, which I think is really important because especially if you're leaving someone to go on a carpet or to go to something, a big event, you do not want to leave them you know, with hair that's gonna fall. So by brushing it, you really see what's gonna happen and how the hair is going to sit. The rule of thumb, if I'm doing this kind of technique, you want it to get back to, you know, a, just a normal temperature. So that's really all that's happening. You want hair to cool down. And then once it's cool, it's set. You don't really have to do it for much longer. But if you feel like doing it, um, letting it sit for 10, 15 minutes, Usually if I'm working alongside makeup, I will let it set as they do eyes or something more detailed if they're doing lashes. Let that happen so you're not yanking hair around where they're trying to do anything you know, really close to the face or anything that's got a lot of detail. So that's usually if I'm working alongside aside someone, my rule of thumb, but you really don't have to give it too much time. It's not like sit for an hour, which I think a lot of people tend to think. And here, I'm just gonna go in Get a little bit of height here, then brush this through. Now we can start going this way. So uh, we have some beach day questions. Not at all. All right, Nicole is asking, what is your recommendation? Well, I'm going to combine these two questions. How would you alter your curling technique today if you're trying to accomplish beachy ways? Um, pretty much with beach waves, the thing about them is you don't need to let it cool at the top. That's the really good part is you're more or less wrapping it around. I'm not actually going to do it, but you're wrapping it around the iron. So you can use the clamp if you want. You don't have to. But the point with that is you're leaving the ends straighter as opposed to making sure the ends are curled. That's what's going to shake that up and make it different. So you can wrap it around. Even if you do get the ends, what I like to do, if I do have the ends, I kind of pull them at the bottom and use this as a flat iron at the very bottom, if that makes sense. And then it kind of pulls it down here so you don't have too much height and it doesn't get puffy with straight ends because then you basically have, you know, a bad, like, nice wave. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of see what's going on. Here is... I like to, where I'm teasing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it at the same angle 
that I held the iron. So I'm holding it like this, and that's the same thing I'm going to do with teasing. So just, you know, a little bit, because I don't want it too crazy. And you can always brush it out, which is nice. And then this last one. In the front here is where, if you want to use setting clips, that would be a great place to do that. So by setting clips, what I'm talking about are these kind of little guys. And so if you wanted to really create that and you were finishing up, if you were working alongside makeup and wanted to finish, let them finish without losing the shape, you could do something like this kind of clip it so it's going to hold that. You totally could keep going to hold on to that curl pattern. So you have options there. And we're going to spray it again. How would you work with a client that had face frames and lines? Like fringe or heart bang or something like that? Well, to be honest, Ashley has a smaller um, or a shorter section in the front. Uh, it does, you could, you could clip in some pieces, which would obviously help, you know, make it so it's not a step. But that's kind of, you, you could also do it, which I like. And it, would, it won't be the side part red curtain, or sorry, the side part red carpet. But you could work with the curtain bangs and flip them out and then do this wave there, which I think is really pretty and works with the curtain bang. But if they want that, you could totally do it to the side. You just will have to work harder to blend the sections and make sure it doesn't fall out. So you have to make sure this front section is really the same curl pattern as these other sections. So they work in together. And then last that I like to use, transforming paste. Ooh. So this product a little bit goes a really, 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 really long way. So you don't need a ton of it. I like to mix in a little hairspray. That's just personally my way to do it. And then this is where I can kind of get the hair down, really work in everything I need it to do. Getting rid of these. but it's great, especially for the front. And this is actually would be really helpful if you did have those shorter pieces, because that will help you combine them and like really get that hold. So there you have it. That is pretty much the whole look. Yeah. What we have? Okay. Do you mind sharing some of your trend predictions that we might be seeing on the red carpet this season? Um, I think this is always a great look that people love, love, love to do. Um, I think people are playing with different lengths, which is nice. And a lot of people are playing with more slicked looks that I've liked. Uh, and also people have been doing a little more like 60s, 70s, where it's like tied up, it's loose, it's pretty, kind of working with those curtain bangs, those shorter pieces that a lot of people, you know, did during quarantine and now they have to live with it. So kind of making that all work and look really chic and pretty. And I think people are going towards more like softer feminine looks as opposed to really harsh ones, which I think we've seen that happen already. And now we're kind of taking a different route. That's, that's my thought, and that's what I've kind of seen and I've really been into. But here you go, you have this, and if you wanted to, back to the beach wave, day two, you can really shake it out. Like, you could just go down, you know, middle part it, really shake it out, maybe if you want to use a little dry shampoo. But what I really like is their new spray wax because it's going to give you that piecier texture and hold without that, like, really waxy, typical feeling. So all you do is, I'm not going to mess this up, but if you wanted to just shake it out, kind of flip it, do a middle part if you wanted, and then you could just take it and spray it, work it in, kind of spray it on the ends, so that way it becomes more of the day two 
and you can keep your day going with it. Oh, okay. Um, the products we used today, we used all aquash, and we prepped with, first we started by washing with Sea Extend Silkening Shampoo and Conditioner. We prepped with Uplifting Foam at the roots, and we used the CBD leave-in at the ends. And then as we went through and curled, we used uh, Beyond Body, so we got that over each section before curling it. And then we finished off with some transforming paste and finishing spray. There you go. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm Laura Polko at Laura Polko if you want to find me. Bye.